Hi everyone, welcome back to another edition of the Biotope vlog. My name is Chris Inglezu from CE Fish Essentials and I'd like to thank you for joining me once again. Uh, today I'm going to keep it quite short and simple. I want to talk to you guys about something called wild aquariums and I want to give you guys a little bit of uh, an insight into this concept. It's a relatively new concept, uh, how it's similar to biotope aquariums, but also how it's quite fundamentally different. Um, so many of you would have not heard of wild aquariums at all. And some of you may be thinking, okay, I get the idea doing an aquarium outside somewhere or something along those lines. Now, um, the concept was, is, is a relatively new one, as I said, uh, only really came about, uh, well, it's probably been quite a number of years now. If we look back, um, I'll have to put it up in the, uh, on the screen for you guys. But the idea was kind of, um, it, it came about through, a good friend of mine called Ivan Mikolji. Some of you may be aware of Ivan's work. If you're not, please check out Mikolji.com. He's an incredible guy. Uh, he's recently written an amazing book called Fishes of the Orinoco in the Wild, where he documents all of these, uh, all of the freshwater fishes that he's come across from an underwater perspective with his incredible photography and tells some of the most beautiful and artistic uh, stories. He, his eye for, for beauty, for natural beauty is just incredible. Um, so I really recommend that. Ivan's book is uh, periodically available through my website, CE Fish Essentials. However, you can buy it also directly from Mikolji.com. So until then, please visit his website, check it out, learn more about his book. Um, but yeah, so Ivan came up with this concept of wild aquariums. And at first, I always remember being a little bit skeptical. Like I, I, I said, well... What, what is this about? Why, why do you need to do an aquarium outside? <laughs> um, and aren't you just encouraging people to get into rivers and take fish? And, you know, what is this all about? So um, Ivan explained it to me and we had a really nice discussion. He, he explained that the concept is about encouraging people to be enthused and interested about freshwater fishes where they are from so wherever you live becoming interested in your local uh, freshwater biodiversity um, I remember Ivan saying to me you know it's very easy to become interested in birds you can go to any habitat in the world it's very easy to to just see them you know if i if i got some binoculars i can go and have a look at a bird and i can understand more about it just by seeing it in its habitat but one of the um the, the same applies to so many species that we we love so dearly and that we um you know so much funding goes towards the conservation of these species and uh, we also discussed well, many times we discussed how underfunded the, the world of freshwater conservation is. Um, and part of Ivan's uh, belief is that because it's not possible for us to easily see them in context in their habitat below the water, it's harder for us to connect with them, harder for us to understand. And so... Um, I believe that was a lot of the motivation behind his book to try to connect people with freshwater fishes and understand them better um, so that we can better be involved in their conservation and make better decisions for the future of freshwater species. But wild aquariums is a perfect example of taking people to places that are local to them where they can 
make action happen more easily. It's, it's great for us to be enthusiastic about fishes in the Amazon and fishes in Australia or somewhere far away from me, for example, here in the UK. Um, and I'm so passionate about these places. But there are species in the UK, there are species uh, existing in London that could probably do with some support of some kind that uh, I could potentially overlook and most likely I could contribute more physical, tangible help for those species because I'm situated nearby. Uh, whether that is, you know, uh, manifests in some sort of involvement in conservation projects, some kind of hands-on work, you know, or just um, in, in many cases, it's just easy for us to donate money, but it's about being enthusiastic about where you live, then connecting with your local environment, your local people and getting a sense of real community. Um, and so wild aquariums was essentially a way to get it to, to, to I suppose the best way to say it is to, it, it is a tool for conservation um, and and it is in the form of an aquarium <laughs> so we can get say schools uh, young people's groups or adults of any age anybody can go to their local environment with an aquarium and create a biotope using the uh, rocks and substrates and aquatic plants and maybe even some of the fishes or other creatures there document it and put it out into the world educate people about what what exists in these places learn about how they live there and then at the end you can return everything back to the habitat to the best of your um, ability and um, allow those creatures to go free again um, now obviously in some cases <laughs> there are protected species or protected habitats and so it's very important that before doing any type of thing like this you're aware that the of wherever you're planning to go is somewhere that you are allowed or or, or that you will not be um, in trouble or committing any sort of offense by interfering with the the nature in that place whether it's the plants the ha any any area of the habitat or um, fishes or amphibians or whatever it is you have to be really careful about these things but it's a wonderful concept it's a wonderful idea and I think under the right kind of um, utilization it could be something that is implemented across schools uh, in connection with NGOs or, or environmental groups or something uh, community groups uh, and even at the or uh, the level of the authorities to educate to inform people of what's around them and, and you know, it's so easy, especially in urban environments, for people to grow up not knowing that they lived right next to a certain habitat or next to a certain species or that even a certain species existed. I've heard this so many times, like, wow, I didn't even know that we had that XYZ species here in London or here in wherever it might be. Um, so in terms of uh, biotopes, a wild aquarium is a way to really immerse yourself in a, in a local biotope to you, um, to have a connection with that place, a minimum impact on your environment, and an educational concept, as long as it's done with respect for the habitat. And in the end, um, create a biotope almost in a temporary fashion for the purposes of encouraging people 
to learn more. And I think that, that gives a little uh, additional meaning behind um, these types of aquariums. It's another way to give meaning um, and attach a conservation orientated angle to aquarium and uh, fish keeping. Uh, let me know what you think guys. I mean for me I'm, I'm always a bit half and half with this subject. Uh, half of me wants to say well you know imagine if everybody went into the rivers and started digging things out and putting them back and so, so on and so on and I agree with that. Perhaps there's uh, as I say there's good ways to do this sort of thing that involves a sort of control on the frequency of how often this happens and a very response you know under the guidance of a responsible organization or something like that these things could be done as educational initiatives um and on the other hand i sort of go well with the the huge scale of um habitat destruction and damage that is taking place whether it's through physical development of natural areas or if it's uh, pollution or any of these types of things that's happening on a really large scale industrial level every day is this really going to make a significant impact uh, or a significant negative impact um, and does the educational value amount to something of you know, some form of equality with the minimal impact that would be caused. It's a really interesting discussion. Um, essentially, you're looking at biotopes in the wild. Uh, what do you guys think? Tell me, tell me. I, I, I like this idea. I think it's a really interesting concept, a fantastic tool for conservation, a great way to um, create interest from a younger generation as well we all know that the fish keeping hobby is a bit of a hobby that's connected to older people from sort of mid 30s upwards so a lot of the younger generations other than children um you know are not really hobbyists but, um, you know, there's, there's, there's a sort of, there's gaps there, I think. I think there's gaps for more young people to be involved long term and of their own accord rather than um, through the parents. <laughs> usually, usually it just ends up the responsibility of the parents anyway, right? So we want to get that longevity with the hobby. Um, and I think it does really boil down to passion. How do you install passion into young people about aquariums um, and I think in the end whether it's through a biotope or a kind of ecosystem setup or if it's a wild aquarium setup it's about that type of real meaning and connection to nature that um, that, that kind of makes that a reality anyway let me know what you think uh, don't forget to click the subscribe button and of course the little bell so you get a nice notification every time i put up a little video i hope you enjoyed this short one i'll be back with another episode next monday um, and i'm going to be talking to you about something very very interesting so as i say hit the subscribe button and don't forget to tune in next week thank you see you soon